this is the, the bubble that we shot on the intersection. Then we have another nice little picture of our truck. Um, the way it would be leaving the intersection. There you go, it's the, all the exposure is there. And when you then look at our 3D scene right here, there's the truck. All our houses are textured. Um, you have the camera right there. You see the camera approaching the truck. Same timing as in the other scene. Now it hits the truck, starts spinning, spinning, spinning. The, car, uh, the truck is exactly match moved uh, to the original truck and it stops looking at the gas station. So just by rendering out, just by switching the scanline renderer from perspective to spherical, you get something like this. And using this as an HDR sequence, we just plug that into Metal Ray and that's it. We've got all the lighting by lighting it with GR that we needed. Um, for example, when you look at the windshield right here, we did the cracks in the windshield with Metal Ray as well. Um, that's the original reflection that, uh, refraction that, that glass would have had in that moment of time. Um, we have the hood right here. This is already the, the defocused version of the hood with all the reflections of the background using the HDR bubble. And of course, um, we have all the trash flying through the car. We had a guy go out in the evening, uh, buy just all sorts of chocolate bars, a Starbucks coffee, uh, he bought a pencil and stuff like that. And we just scanned that, and did some rough modeling and lit all that with our HDR bubble that we rendered out from Nuke. And then we went back into Nuke just to put everything together. So this is the stitched background that we end up having from our Nuke setup, from the camera projection onto the geometry. Then we have the foreground uh, with our little uh, illuminated dashboard. Then there are a couple of fixes that we did, of course, and adding the windshield stuff right there when the car crashes. On top of that, the hood, etc. So this is all the foreground merged, and in the end, we merge everything with our background plate, including the nuke vector uh, motion blur. You end up having something like that. I'll show you the foreground and the background in motion real quick. So this is the stitched background plate already with all the necessary uh, defocusing. So the perspective of the seam is really good. Um, most of it is hidden behind the driver's head anyway, but just by tweaking a little color correction, we could have done more than that. So um, that's our background plate. Now let's go to the foreground plate that we ended up having. By using the 3D track and the camera reframing in Nuke, we, um, we stitched a little bit of the car's roof and a little bit of the seats down on the car, um, just to have a little bit more extra space to, to add some camera shake there. And there we have our extra inside uh, on stage, grabbing him, trying to help. And then back again to the final shot. Looks something like this. So there is another shot that we did for um, This Is Love that involved very heavy camera mapping and matte painting. That's a 16-second shot where we had to transform uh, Berlin from 2008 into 1992. That's the first one that we're going to see. There you go. Uh, that shot is about 16 seconds long. Um, took us four weeks to do. That was the plate that we shot, but we threw everything away. We had to um, clean everything from surveillance cameras, replace the whole ground, um, add all the buildings that you could see uh, when the skyscrapers weren't there yet. 
And so in the background you see about 300 little pieces of geometry and matte painting um, put together. About 200 nuke channels that we could use for um, the color correction on the EXR render output. And that's it. Even the car is a 3D model by now, switching its texture every 10 seconds. All right, and now back to the car crash. There we go. That's what we just saw. There's the green screen. We even tried pulling the car up with a forklift to flip it to its side to give him some forces. And now you see the breakdown of the background stitching. There you have the camera to the left and the camera to the right projected onto the geometry, him driving and the foreground plate, everything put together. And now when we hit the truck, bam, we switch to our HDR bubble background with the match move truck. Put the hood in. Cracks in the windshield, trash flying around. There you go. In previous, a lot of the times, and maybe not so much now, but people will, will force things around physically to make them correct in the camera. That's obviously something that you didn't seem to do a lot of cheats. You tried to recreate the environment correctly in previs yeah. in, in doing that, you know. Uh, how important is that, actually? Um, from my point of view, very important. Um, especially when you do something as complex as this. Um, it requires really a lot of planning. Um, the way you set up your cameras on the hood, um, the angle in between those two perspectives that you're filming, uh, looking out on the street. Um, but, but is that different though for this particular process than something you might pre in a different way? I mean, there are times at pre you just need to kind of get something out versus this pre was specifically to yeah. write, to yeah, well, basically, you know, we, we started doing the previs without knowing how, we go, how we're going to solve the whole shot. So we just wanted to have something to talk about with the director, something that he would approve as a representation of his vision that he had from the beginning. And so we used the previs as that. And from there, it was just easier to, to take the assets and animation curves of the previs to really go exactly this way. Um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't really do it any other way on, on any other project probably. It was just, just trying stuff, um, showing to the director uh, if that was what he had in mind. And at that point, it was just easy to, to do this whole breakdown on how to solve the whole thing and how to take it apart and how to shoot it.